Hey guys, welcome back again. Second video today because um, I need to get more content. <laughs> um, as I was getting together all of my whip parades, I decided I need to show you what I finished in 2020. And I thought how fun would it be to just show you a finished parade of everything I've actually finished while being on YouTube. So here we go. So according to my papers and my notes, um, I have 12, cur 13 current whips. Um, but since I have been on YouTube, I have had 41 starts and 38 finishes, including five gifts. So I'm going to show you, go ahead and show you the picture of the gifts so far that I stitched for others. I think I'm actually wrong on that. I think I've gotten more gifts than that, but the five I can recollect, I'm going to show you pictures of that. These three I stitched for my brothers. This one I stitched for my mom, which she loved. And this one I stitched for my niece for um, right before she was born. I stitched this and gifted this um, to my brother for his um, second daughter. Then these are all of my finishes for the year 2020. Um, I have not FFO'd most of these. I've only FFO'd like nine the whole four years I've been on YouTube, which is kind of sad, but at least they're stitched and ready to FFO whenever I get the chance to do so. Um, or the inspiration, either one. So anyway, this was my first stitch of 2020, and this was this pattern was gifted to me by my friend Jillian at Musings with Jillian, another floss tube channel. This was my uh, first cute little start, two little birds, and this is I think this is called Grape Crush Karen Water Lilies. Very pretty. This is another finish that I did 2020, and I folded them so they're a little bit. A little bit creased but this is um summer from lila studio super cute i'm gonna do the whole series of these the only the only reason why i only finished one is because my eyes were so um strained because of the whole glass issues and i was strained before anyway because i needed a strong update on my prescription um that this is 36 count this is either 36 count or 40 count I can't recall and it's a little bit strenuous on my eyes so I only ever did one but now that I have new glasses I think I can probably tackle the rest of them this is another little finish this is love by JBW and this is on um, I'm trying to remember what this is called this is an opal natural linen, I think. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. You can't really see a whole lot, but it's got a little shimmer to it. I um, had this little scrap of pap uh, paper, little scrap of fabric, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I just have like this pile of scraps of uh, fabric. And um, I looked at the size of that and I was like, that is the perfect size for that. And I can make that into a little pillow or a little small. I thought that was super cute. Then this one I showed right before I finished it. I finished it. It's so cute. It says on here, and then ch the chart is called Love Comes in All Shapes and Sizes. And I stitched this on 32 count Wild Orchid Lugana. And it turned out so cute. I love it. Mm, so cute. Then I finished the Eiffel Quaker by, I believe, Jardin Privé. This turned out really, really pretty. I did my own color conversion as well. 
into purples instead of browns. And I wish I had the colors off the top of my head right now, but I do not. So it's just three shades of purple. Then I also stitched, finished this one um, in 2020. And this one is called the Sampler O Chats by, oh, I forgot the name of the designer. Sampler O Chats. And it's super cute. I stitched this on light oatmeal, 18 count Eda, with the thread works of Bleeding Heart. And I think it turned out just a, it just awesome, just adorable. I don't know how many more samplers I'm going to be doing because I've done like four or five of them already, but I really enjoyed them all. And then I finished um, the uh, Aurora Morpho by Nora Corbett on 32 count petite point gray Lugana. This is another one of my favorite fabrics to stitch on. I just think it turns out so cute every time. And what I particularly liked about this is that this really soft green in her wings is almost slightly translucent where you can see the dots behind her wings, which makes her wings look slightly sheerish. I think that's awesome. Anyway, this is fully beaded, ready to frame. That is one of my next, um, one of the th next things I intend to do. You can see that it's all beaded, the chronics all in it. I just think it's adorable. So those are my finishes for 2020. Um, not huge, but I'm not feeling too bad. I feel pretty good about that. Um, and then I wanted to show you my pre 2020 finishes since I have joined YouTube because this is a little bit more and you'll see that there was a time there was a little window of time I was really focusing on smalls um, there are some bigger ones mixed in here but I was really focusing on some smalls there and I'm wanting to focus more of my time on the large ones my camera shut off so let's try this again um, this one is called um, Je Suis de Jardin, and I believe it's by Tra La La. Very cute. And I had the companion piece for it, too, and I was hoping to just show you both of those together, and I just don't know where it is right now. So, we're just going to keep going. This one is, I forgot the name of this one. There's so many, and if, once you see it, you'll know what I mean. This one is a soda picture. And I'm stitching this on a lightly modeled blue and white hand dye that my friend did. Uh, one of my favorites. I think that one is just so cute. And then I did uh, Country Cottage Needleworks Little Mermaids. And I didn't realize until after I had finished it, I do not have the, um, the French knots in there for the eyes. So there will be French knots in there for the eyes. Um, and the only disappointment I have with this one is I, I did all of the colors myself. This was not any of the colors that were charted. This one is really pale. And I wish I had done it a little darker. And I'm thinking I could at least outline it. That's, that's one of my options. It's still very cute. I just wish I had gone a little bit darker on that one. And then we have done, ah, this one's the companion piece on the um, Je Suis de Jardin. Don't even question my French. <clears throat> and this is <laughs> the little companion piece, uh, the little girl with the cat and the, the cherry tree. Um, and this one's done on um, limestone Lugana. I did these all, this little batch of um, spring ones, to make into a basket, uh, some designs for a basket. That's the plan. And then I stitched this Happy Easter, which was a free pattern I found online. I don't remember where I got it, but it was super cute. And I did my own colors on this one as well. I decided 
and I decided this a little while ago. The big ones, I want to make sure I get the right colors. The little ones, I'll fudge. I will go through my DMC boxes and I will just find colors that look good and I'll use them. I don't think that's a problem at all. This one is, I believe, this one's called Hear a Peep. And I don't remember the name. I'm, I don't remember the name of the designer. It's been, it's been a little while and I'm just drawing a blank on it. Then I did this one, which can't I remember the designer of this? It's like 10th Avenue something. I might be confusing that. This one is just love. And if you look for it on one, two, three stitch, which that's, that's where I found it. It was originally stitched on a black fabric and I am not a black fabric stitcher. So I just put it on some white and I think it turned out really, really cute. Here is another free stitch. I think this is by Snowflower Diaries. This one's called Spring. Super cute. Again, I just chose my own colors. Follow the pattern, use your own color conversion. That is, that's a motto we can all live by in the stitching world. This one is also by Tra La La, and this one is the Paris, the Paris one by Tra La La. This one turned out cuter than I expected. Really adorable. Really, really adorable. This is on Silvery Moon um, Lugana. This one, again, I don't remember who the designer is. Could be a little house. Could be... I'm not sure. But it's very cute. And I stitched it on an opal natural linen again. Very cute. Really, really like that one a lot. And if I can remember the name of them, I'll just like insert them in text on the screen because some of these I don't remember the name of them. This one is one I, I didn't design this one, but I personally altered it because I loved this picture by Corey Batacor and um, I had this small piece of fabric which I just loved for it and so I took the big fall sampler, the big fall collection chose six of the little motifs and just stitched them on it. My favorite being the cat. And then I really, really like that pumpkin in the, the cloche. I think that's just really, really pretty. And I think that turned out really well as well. It, it's, it's kind of a, one of the more unique ones that no one else has one just like it. Then I've stitched this one, which is Soda's Anne of Green Gables. Very, very cute. Again, I'm going to say that a lot just to get over it. Deal with it. I tend to say I love it. It's adorable. And <laughs> what I just said, super cute. And then I also did the Soda Little Mermaid. And this one is my favorite one. And I have to laugh every time I look at this because I kind of, I kind of upped her, her bustier. I gave her a, a little large bosom because she just did not look quite adult enough in the chest. Uh, if you can just give me a couple more minutes. I just want to finish this video, Jim. Sorry, just got interrupted there. Uh, then I did uh, Nora Corbett's Poison Ivy on another piece of the um, Vintage Stormy Night Logana and I did alter her dress in the back. It was very low, like basically showing her Jimmy Crap Corn and I don't care. I upped it so that she was a little more covered and I really, really like her. I was going to frame her. I was so like, I've got the beads. I was just going to start beading her. And I got this frame and I loved it. And then all of a sudden I realized she's too tall for the frame. So I have to go get a unique size frame for her. She's just a little taller than the average. 
because this is another one that I framed from Nora. Um, this one is uh, Colombian Nymphalid, and she fits perfectly in the uh, 8x10 size. And um, I'm going to be framing the um, Aurora Morpho in the same exact frame because she'll fit just as wonderfully, and she'll be on the wall up here. Um, there are, they are the companion pieces that I have and want to put together. But she's, um, and when I say she, I mean Poison Ivy, she's probably going to take like a 11 or 12 inch long because she's just an awkward size. Um, I really like to be able to frame them myself, but some of them I'm just going to, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, then I did this one, which I believe is on Jungle Boogie by Silk Weaver. 32 count opal jungle boogie. This one is Cottage Blossom. Love her. She was languishing for quite a while because I was not wanting to do the yellow in the skirt. I wanted to do a color conversion of that, but I finally just I caved and stitched it as it was charted because I couldn't come up with a color conversion that looked good. I kept trying and I could not. So I did it in yellow. It's just pretty the way it was charted. And so that's what we're going with. And that's what we went with. Then this one is Ink Circles Blue Morpho. And I think this one turned out gorgeous. Love it. Love it. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, I was really nervous about that um, crescent colors. Or is it now it's classic colorways now I was really nervous about that thread but it came out so pretty um, in fact my mom has since ordered some of this to do this picture for herself doesn't look a thing like it so we're gonna go to um, an LNS one of these years and try to uh, figure out some colors uh, that we like in person because some of these we're just not happy with them ordering them online that is definitely on the to-do list then I stitched this one picture by Satsuma Street called Pretty Little Washington this was probably one of the first starts I had once I uh, started plus two and it was actually a really fast stitch I'm, I'm shocked by that I really like my backs to look clean. This is what I'm telling you. I've tried to make my backs look as nice as the fronts. So I am a perfectionist. I don't like extra threads. I don't like stringing things along. <laughs> that actually looks really good. I mean, I haven't looked at that forever. That actually looks like surprisingly good. But I think that's just kind of what they all do now because I've been trying so hard to to be a perfectionist in my stitching and that's one of the reasons why I don't have as many finishes or have quite as much progress um, as some other people do as my mom does I know she just gets things done a lot quicker than I do and then we've got this one which is uh, Greystone Manor by Rosewood Manor I believe that's what it's called and um, that one is so pretty I love the elegant feminine feminine touch of like the lace on the bottom the flowers and the birds and I put my initials in it and I kind of commemorated 2018 because that was I literally finished this a day or two bef before my uh, my dad came home from his extended stay in the hospital after he got um, a cancer diagnosis which he's doing he's doing awesome right now by the way he's doing awesome just awesome it's like it never happened um, but I finished that while he was in the hospital or like a day before he came home so that was kind of like we're gonna we're gonna just use this time to kind of commemorate it a little bit remember it as something beautiful uh, that he's out of there so it's beautiful he's out of there <laughs> So that was that was kind of what I did I don't date things often I usually am not a, a stitch dater I think that kind of ages them but I mean I guess I don't really care anymore I'm kind of getting to the point where I think dating my work is maybe a better idea I'm kind of getting there 
and then I did um, soda this little cafe picture in this in the uh, there at a cafe very very cute I usually stitch my sodas on just plain white except for um, the little boy and girl um, on the park bench I did stitch that one on a bit of a color but usually I just go with the white for those and then this is the last one I'm gonna show you of my finishes since joining floss tube um, and this is probably one of my favorites um, I think you kind of watched some of my trials with this one some of my frustrations but I'm so happy with it now this is hang on autumn fairy by passion or Camo, and it is stitched on What is this called? It's stitched. Oh, <laughs> come on now. I just had it and it left me. This one is stitched on brandy wine. Silk Weaver's brandy wine. And she is so pretty. I just I just love how the colors blend on this one. The colors in the picture with the colors in the fabric. I just I just love it. It's one of my favorites. So pretty. If you have not guessed, I love purple, I love teal, okay? Those are like my two favorite colors. And I also love like a pretty raspberry. So this is kind of like all of them combined. I just think it is so pretty. It's just stunning. It's gonna look so gorgeous when it's framed. I had a problem with the wing, but that is, that is no more. It's done, <laughs> I'm so happy, so, so happy. So there you go. There is my finished parade. I might have finished a couple more and I'm just forgetting them right now. But that is at least the majority of my finishes for um, the last few years I've been on floss tube. I, I have about roughly approximately 10 or 12 finishes a year. I, since I stitch more big things, that's not so surprising. But um, I'd like to up that just a little bit, but I'm really, really happy with my pile of finishes, and I hope you've enjoyed watching my pile of finishes, watching this finish parade. Um, I do have more coming, more starts. What are my plans for 2020, you ask? Um, I really want to focus on my haids some more because those are still going to take a lot of work. And if I can focus more on those, I'll get more progress. And I really want to see those start building and start just kind of masterpiecing themselves. Um, I really want to, to get some more of my uh, whips finished. But I have, I have a lot of projects already kitted up, you guys, ready to start at any time. Like literally fabric, floss, pattern. I might need like a chronic or two, I don't know. Um, but I have so many just ready to go at any one time. I know I really wanna start my first lavender and lace. I really wanna stitch another soda. I wanna stitch um, a Bella Filipina that I found that is so pretty. So I have got, I've got a lot planned. I don't know how many starts I'll have this year, but it's, it's a pretty good amount. So if you enjoyed this video, um, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed, please do so. I hope to be showing videos more often. And like I mentioned on my last video, I would really like to post an update at least once a month. Um, it's hard for me to do much more often than that, but that's a pretty good goal for me to set right now. Um, so there we go hopefully once a month if you have not checked out my other channel I will link that one down below if you enjoy gluten-free cooking videos or if you enjoy spontaneous craft with me videos I do some of those on my other channel um, called the Christie cafe and I also record audiobook recordings there and I'm working on Anne of Green Gables right now I just finished the 25th chapter out of 38 so I am now two-thirds of the way through Anne of Green Gables I'm working on more projects and will be working on more projects I update a new chapter every Monday 
So if you want to go check that out, you are more than welcome to do that. I love listening to a good audiobook while stitching. That's just, my focus is here, but my brain can still listen to a story. So that's what I really enjoy. If you are a return viewer, thank you so much for visiting with me again today. And I hope you have enjoyed everything I've shown. I hope you've been inspired at least a little bit. I've been inspired by so many Floss 2 videos lately. So... I just hope to kind of add to that uh, collaboration of inspiring people. And I hope you will come back again soon. So I will see you later. Ciao.